Have you ever wondered why some people don't want their bank shifts to be signed off for a certain week? Did you ever hear somebody say, Oh, I won't do three shifts in one week. Instead, I will do one shift per week. Do you ever wonder why? If you want to know more, then keep watching this video. Hello everyone, my name is Jake and welcome back to my channel. For today's vlog, I want to talk about bank shifts and how you could be losing money because you are either doing the wrong pattern of shifts or you are doing too much bank shifts. If you've only just arrived here in the UK or you are just about to be deployed, when you hear the word bank shifts, we are not talking about working in financial institutions like BDO, Metro Bank, or BPI. When you say bank, it is basically a pool of nurses that fill in those empty shifts in the hospitals, in the community, or any other setting. Each institution, whether it is a government institution or a private hospital or a care home, will have their own bank system. So as a nurse, you can sign up to the bank so that you can do extra shifts on top of your regular shifts. This way you can earn more money on top of your regular salary, especially during these lockdown times where really there's nothing else to do or there's nowhere else to go. In order to understand how you could be losing money from doing bank shifts, you need to understand the tax banding here in the UK. So if you are working here in the UK, there are four tax bands. The first band is personal allowance, wherein you can earn up to £12,500 and that is tax-free. When you go beyond that amount, you now go to basic rate, which is from £12,501 up to £50,000 and for those amount that you earn between that range that will be taxed 20%. If you go beyond that amount and earn between £50,001 to £150,000 you will be included in the higher rate band which is 40% taxation. And anything above £150,000, you will have an additional rate which will be 45% tax. The amount per band has been changing over the years. So if I remember in the past few years, the 40% tax would start off from 45 and the year before that it was at £40,000. So it may change per year, so you have to check that. But for this um, financial year from April 6, 2020, to April 5, 2021, these are the current ranges. So how does this work? Does it mean if you earn above 50,000, everything will be taxed 40%? No, that's not how it works. Let's say for example, you are a band six earning 35,000 pounds per year as per your contract, 12,500 pounds of that will be tax free. And because the total amount of your annual salary is still below 50,000 pounds, then all the rest of your salary will be taxed at 20%. If, for example, you do bank shifts and for the whole year, when calculated, you've actually earned up to £70,000, so that £20,000 will be taxed 40%. That is how it works. Now, how could you be losing some money in terms of doing bank shifts? So I'm going to give you a concrete example so you can see it clearly. If you want to keep your tax at 20%, that means you must not go beyond £50,000 of gross income per year. If you divide that by 12, that is £4,167 per month. And if you divide that by 4, that means your weekly income should not be more than £1,041.75. Okay, let's compare two scenarios. Let's say, for example, for the month of February, for the first week, you are going to do three bank shifts and for the remaining three weeks, you won't do any bank shifts versus doing one shift every week for three weeks and no bank shift on the last week. Okay, let's do the first scenario. To make it more relevant, I will be using the enhanced rate, which most hospitals are using now 
to encourage nurses to do band shifts. So even if you're band 5, you are paid a band 6 market rate of £25 per hour. That means you will be earning £287.50 per shift. If you multiply that by 3, you will have an extra income of £862.50 for that month. Now, since you are a band 5 nurse with an annual contracted salary of 24907 if you divide that by 12 and then divide it again by 4, that means your weekly salary will be £519. So if you combine your regular weekly salary of £519 plus your earnings of three bank shifts using the enhanced rate, which is £862.5, you will have £1,381.5 for that week. With this total amount, anything above £1,041.75 will be taxed 40%. So in terms of taxation, this is how it is going to look like. Your weekly personal allowance is £260.42. So that will be no tax. £781.33 will be taxed 20% and the remaining £339.75 will be taxed 40%. Therefore, instead of £1,381.5, you will be getting a net salary of £1,089.33. So if you add three weeks of £519 for the remaining weeks to make it a full month, that means your gross monthly income, if you have three bank shifts in one week and no bank shifts for the next three weeks, is £2,983. 0.5 pounds and when you remove the tax that will be 2491.186 pounds okay now let's say you just do one bank shift at the same enhanced rate per week but you do it in three separate weeks and the last week doesn't have a bank shift one bank shift as we have said earlier is 287.5 pounds and you add 519 pounds for your regular weekly salary that will give you 806.5 pounds so this amount is below your cap of 1041 pounds for the 20 percent taxation so that means no amount will be deducted for the 40 percent so the computation will be like this and you will have a total of 697 point Two eight four pounds as your salary for that week now if you multiply this by three because you've done one bank shift for three weeks and you add 519 pounds for the last week where you haven't done a bank shift you will have a gross monthly income of 2938.5 pounds which is exactly the same in terms of gross figures if you had done three bank shifts in just one week but in terms of taxation because no amount has gone beyond the cap and you didn't have the 40 percent tax you will have a net amount for this month of 2559.136 pounds compared to earlier which is 2000 491.186 pounds so that is a difference of 67.95 pounds that you have lost to tax because you have gone above the 20 percent cap for the week so that example is just for three bank shifts that you do in one week but what if you are like one of my friends who do three shifts per week for a full month or even for a few months so Instead of just £67, you could be losing more. So you need to be very wise at spacing your bank shifts. But don't worry because at the end of the financial year, even if you've done loads of bank shifts, let's say for just one month and the rest of the year you have been inactive, that will be recomputed. If you haven't actually gone beyond 50000 in total for the year, then whatever they've deducted from you, 
using the 40% taxation will be returned. So that's why you will be receiving letter from HMRC that contains a tax refund. But also, if you've done too much shifts and it has been taxed only 20%, then you might get a letter as well saying that you owe HMRC more money that you need to pay. So this is exactly why some people are asking the managers to sign their shifts at a certain time because they don't want, for example, because you are on annual leave and you've done six bank shifts for this week, if you base it on the weekly cap, then you will be way over your 20% cap and therefore you might be deducted 40 or even 45% for that week. But of course, we cannot really tell when the shifts can become available. So if there are like five shifts available this week that you want to grab it, then that's fine. But if they are all paid at a single time that week, then the salary will be paid to you the next week. Then the tax might be bigger. And that's why some people only do one bank shift per week to keep their tax at 20% level. Of course, if you really need your money and you've got nothing else to do anyway at home because of lockdown, then you might as well do some bank shifts. But just be careful and space it out evenly. Let's say you want to do seven bank shifts for the month, okay? Instead of doing four shifts one week and then three shifts the next week, you can do two, 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 and one per week. So that will spread it out, lessen your taxation level per week. So that figure of 519 is just based on the usual offers at NHS jobs, starting rate of 24,907. Obviously, if you've been here for a few years now, your salary will have increased every year. So if you want to know how much bank shifts you can do per week without going beyond your 20% cap, then divide your current annual salary by 12, then divide it by 4. You deduct that amount from 1041.75, then you deduct that amount from 1041.75 pounds, and that's the extra income that you can still earn gross with 20% tax. So from there, you can work it out. For example, the amount you have left because you're already at band seven is you've got 300 pounds left. So for you, that might just be one shift per week. If you've been doing bank shifts and they have not been taxed, do not be happy because that means your bank payroll is not connected to your regular payroll. Even though you're getting the full amount now, the HMRC, once they found out that you are the same person as this name who has a regular or permanent job, then that amount will be taxed. Okay, so I have a friend who had the situation and for the first uh, few months that he was doing bank, he was not taxed. Okay. And then it's only after a year when the assessment was done and it was found out that actually this um, employee name and account is the same as this person who has a regular job. And therefore, there should be no additional 12,500 pounds of personal allowance. So that should be calculated on top of your regular job. In short, guys, he was chased by the HMRC and now has to pay a few hundred and I think maybe a few thousand pounds to make up for whatever was not taxed. So if you see anything like that, don't be too happy. <laughs> it might mean that your tax is not being calculated properly or hasn't been connected to your permanent job. So you don't want to be surprised later on after a few years and the tax man is chasing after you so if you have some doubts about it go speak to payroll and just clarify
okay? I know this has been sort of a serious topic, guys, but I don't want you to lose any more money to tax than you have to. So you need to be very clever and sort out your bank shift patterns and space them out evenly so you don't go above the weekly cap. So I won't keep you any longer. I know some of you might still be doing some bank shifts later. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this has helped you to plan your future bank shifts. If you like this video, please help me by clicking the like button. And if you still haven't subscribed, then please click that red button that says subscribe down below the video. And don't forget to keep your notification bell in full shade so that you will be notified as soon as I upload another useful video just like this. Once again, thank you for watching and let's continue to do our best and keep up the good fight. I wish you all the best guys. God bless and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.